this is probably the easiest way to make short row shaping. When we get to the spot where we're supposed to turn the work on the knit side of the fabric, we keep the yarn at the back of the work and then we insert the tip of the right needle from front to back into the stitch that is underneath the first stitch on the left needle. So we don't look for any strands, we don't do any unusual maneuvers, we simply insert the needle into the stitch directly. So we look for the first stitch on the left needle and go right underneath it, going into that stitch that is below. And then we wrap the tip of the right needle with the working yarn as we do for knitting, and then pull the wrap through the fabric like this, forming a new stitch. That's our lifted stitch. And now we need to slip it from the right needle to the left needle. And we can do it in two ways. If for easier way, we can simply insert the tip of the left needle into the stitch from left to right, like this. But if we are uh, after a neater look, then it's better to go from right to left, like this. And then is the right needle out, leaving the stitch on the left needle. The difference in look is not big. So if your short row shaping is not in the middle of stocking that stitch, then it is safe to, to go with the easier option and insert the tip of the left needle into the stitch from left to right. It is more streamlined, faster and easier. Now we form the double stitch, see? And this stitch makes sure that there is no hole in this area after we turn the work. So this stitch is our guardian. It guards this spot against all holes. On the purl side of the work, again, we work until we get to the spot where we're supposed to turn the work. And then we keep the yarn at the front of the fabric and insert the tip of the right needle uh, into that same stitch, the stitch that is underneath the first stitch on the left needle. But this time we go from back to front like this. Then we wrap the needle with the yarn and pull the wrap through the fabric, forming a lifted stitch. And then we slip the stitch to the left needle with purl stitches. It is easier because the easiest way is also the neatest one. So we simply go from left to right like this and place the stitch on the left needle. And now we can turn the work. And the process is the same whether you hold the yarn in your left hand or in your right hand. So if the yarn is in your right hand, you will also work to the spot where you are supposed to turn the work and then keep the yarn in the back insert the tip of the right needle into the stitch below the first stitch on the left needle, then wrap the needle with the yarn, pull the wrap through the fabric, forming this lifted stitch, and then slip it to the left needle, either the easier way or the neater way, like this. And then turn the work. In both cases, see, we formed absolutely identical double stitches. On the purl side of the fabric, we do the same, we work to the spot where we're supposed to turn the work, then we go into the stitch below, this time from back to front, then we pick the yarn, wrap it around the tip of the right needle as we do for purling, and pull the wrap through and place it on the left needle. So it doesn't matter whether you hold yarn in your right hand or your left hand, the process is exactly the same. When it is time to work the first full row, so the shaping is done, and we need to work the first, the first full row, we are gonna stumble upon these double stitches. And we treat them simply as one stitch. So these two strands belong to the same stitch. So we're gonna knit these two strands together when we encounter these stitches on the knit side of the fabric. And we're gonna purl them together when we meet them on the purl side of the work, which was gonna happen in just a moment. You can't really miss them. See, when you get to these stitches, you will notice that something is off. The stitches, uh, because these stitches are different, they are much thicker than the regular stitch, and it is hard to work them separately, those strands, because they're kind of keeping together. So it is, it, it tells you that I want to be purled as one stitch. And that's exactly what we do to these stitches. We simply purl them as if it was one stitch and not a double stitch. So when we work a few rows, we would see that the shaping that we've just made forms a nice, almost invisible flow of stitches. See, 
you can tell that there is something going on here first because the shaping changed and second because the stitches are a bit thicker because they are double stitches right on both sides of the fabric but it's not something that is really ugly it doesn't uh, look bad even on stockinette stitch and it will be almost hidden if you work in any different uh, in any other stitch pattern on the wrong side of the work we have these nice ridges that outline the shaping and they also don't look bad at all uh, and as you see there are no holes over here those guardians those double stitches they did their job and there are no holes uh, anywhere on the fabric and that is true also for fabric worked in the round so this method is perfect for using on seamless projects because all we have to do is follow the same process and in the first uh, full round we simply knit double stitches together with their strands additional strands so we treat these stitches as one same as we did over here and then we get a perfectly shaped fabric without any holes anywhere. To get the full photo tutorial about this method, go to tenrowsday.com slash lifted dash short dash rows. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.